Mr. McCoy back with part 15 of Escape from Mr. Limoncello's library. As you recall, Charles asked, so all we ever needed was F mom. We could have found this book hours ago. Andrew gulped. You are such a disappointment. Shaking his head, Charles huffed over to one of the hover ladders. He quickly jabbed F-M-O-N-N into the keypad. The boot clamps locked into place around his ankles. You owe me for wasting all this time, Andrew. You owe me big time. If you let me down once more, I swear I will tell everybody you're a big blubbering baby. I'll Twitter it and post it on Facebook. Don't worry. I'll make you glad you picked me for your team, Charles. I promise. The hover ladder lifted off the floor and gently glided up to the end section of the fiction wall. Shuttling sideways, it carried Charles over to a shelf displaying all of the Anne books. He grabbed a copy of Anne of Green Gables. As soon as he did, the ladder started its slow descent to the floor. What'd you find? asked Andrew when Charles landed. The clue we needed. He showed Andrew the car that had been tucked inside the front cover. Okay, said Andrew. It's C plus hat. So the word is chat, which, by the way, could also be cut for French word for cat. Well done, Andrew, said Charles, even though he knew the clue really was C plus N equals can, thereby making the puzzle. You can walk out the way blank blank in in past blank. The way what did what, he wondered, and what does in in mean? Charles desperately needed to find the three missing pictograms. Suddenly, Mr. Limoncello's voice boomed out of speakers, ringing the rotunda. Hey, Charles. Hey, Andrew. Let's do a deal. Game show music blared. A canned crowd cheered. Charles turned around and saw shafts of colored light illuminating three envelopes perched on top of the librarian's round desk. Clarence, the security guard, marched into the reading room and, folding his arms over his chest, took up a position near the three envelopes. We have a green envelope, we have a blue envelope, and we have a red envelope, said Mr. Limoncello. In two of those three envelopes are copies of two of the three pictogram clues you still need. In one, there is a clunker card. If you pick an envelope with a clue, you get to keep it, and you get to keep going. But once you pick the clunker card, you're done, and you must suffer the consequences. Andrew raised his hand. Yes, Andrew. What are the consequences? Something bad, said Mr. Limoncello. In fact, something wicked this way will probably come. Do you want to do a deal? Yes, said Charles. The canned audience cheered. All right then, Charles, you roll first. Pardon? Swipe your fingers across the nearest desktop computer panel. The Dice Tumblr app is up and running. Again, the pre-recorded audience cheered. They sounded like they loved watching the dice tumble more than anything in the world. Charles slid his fingers across a glass pane. The animated dice rolled. Ooh, cried Mr. Limoncello, double sixes. That gives you a 12. Is that good, sir? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, Andrew, your turn. Peckelman tapped the glass. The dice flipped over. Another set of doubles, said Mr. Limoncello. Yeah, muttered Charles. Two ones, snake eyes. Is that bad? asked Andrew. Maybe, said Mr. Limoncello, maybe not. Okay, guys, which envelope would you like to open? Okay, students, if given this opportunity, which envelope would you like to open? Would it be green? Would it be blue? Would it be red? Share your choice with your fellow listeners. Charles thought about it while TikTok music played. They were given this chance to play Let's Do a Deal after they located the Anne of Green Gables clue. Coincidence? He didn't think so. We'll take the green envelope, sir. Clarence presented the green envelope to Charles. 
Open it, said Andrew. Open it. Charles undid the clasp, pulled out a card, a loud zonk. Uh-oh, mumbled Andrew. What's it say on that card? Sorry, kids, you're out of luck, read Charles. So out of doors, you're all now stuck. Clarence picked up the blue and red envelopes and marched back toward the entrance hall. What's that mean? said Andrew. Well, said Mr. Limoncello, Charles rolled a 12 and you rolled a 2. What's 12 plus 2? 14, said Charles eagerly, the way he always did in math when he wanted to remind the teacher that he was the smartest kid in the class. Ooh, said Mr. Limoncello, this is not good. In fact, I'd say it's stinkerific. Stinkerific, said Andrew. Is that even a word? It is now, said Mr. Limoncello. JJ, tell them what they've lost. An authoritative female voice boomed out of the ceiling speakers. Warning, due to a clunker card, all ten Dewey Decimal doors will lock in ten minutes at exactly eight o'clock. If you are in one of those rooms, kindly leave immediately. The ten doors on the second floor will remain locked for 14 hours. Andrew panicked. What? 14 hours? I told you 12 plus 2 was bad, quipped Mr. Limoncello. Of course, it could have been good. If you had picked one of the other envelopes, you would have received a clue and a free 14-month subscription to Library Journal. Charles did some quick math. Sir, does this mean we'll be locked out of the 10 Dewey Decimal Rooms until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning? Bingo, said Mr. Limoncello. It sure does. This stinks, whined Andrew. We need those stupid rooms to solve your stupid puzzle. Clunker cards stink. This game stinks. 14-hour penalty stink. Charles did his best to block out Andrew's rant. He needed to think. And then it hit him. Kyle Keeley's team had to be working on some other solution to the bigger puzzle of how to escape from the library. Otherwise, Charles and his team would not have been able to find the nine clues they'd already picked up. Surely, if Keeley's team had been playing the same memory match game, they would have found at least one of the pictograms before Charles, Andrew, or Haley did. They must be working on a completely different angle. Charles was certain that if he could use his downtime to learn what Keeley and his team had in their meeting room and combined it with his picture puzzle, he would emerge from the library victorious. Do not despair, Andrew, Charles said confidently. We are still going to win. How? Charles leaned in cupped a hand around his mouth so no security cameras could read his lips. Remember, he whispered, you need to pay me back for wasting a ton of time in finding Anne of Green Gables. What? You're the one who picked the stupid green envelope with the stupid clunker card. Charles narrowed his eyes and chilled his hushed voice. So? Um, nothing, said Andrew nervously. Just thought I'd, you know, point it out. Charles turned his eyes into blue ice. So, whispered Andrew, swallowing hard, what exactly do you want me to do? Find a way to sneak into community meeting room B. Andrew wheezed in panic. That's impossible. Don't worry, I have an idea. What is it? Two words. Sierra Russell. So what do you suppose Charles's plan is? Share with your fellow listener. Ever wonder if this could wreak any worse, said Akima, because it couldn't. Yo, none of us pulled a clunker card, growls Miguel. That means somebody on Charles's team did it. Akima and Miguel are right, Kyle, said Sierra. This really isn't fair. I know, was all Kyle could say, but it's like in Mr. Limoncello's Family Frenzy where one player pulls the orthodontist card and everybody has to move back seven spaces to buy their kids' braces. Kyle and his teammates were back in community meeting room B. 
They'd been staring at the clue board, wondering what a wailing blackbird had to do with Willy Wonka and the Ten Commandments, not to mention that long list of books and all the statues when the voice in the ceiling made its announcement about the Dewey Decimal Doors being locked for 14 hours. Well, Mr. Limoncello better have a good reason, said Akima. Oh, I do, said Mr. Limoncello. His face appeared on one of the meeting room walls, which was really a giant plasma screen video monitor. Team Kyle is not being penalized for Team Charles's blunder, he said. Far from it. In fact, you are being rewarded. Kima arched her eyebrows in disbelief. Really? How? The other team's penalty gives you a wrinkle in time. A wrinkle in time, said Kyle. Is that a clue? No, it's a book. And sometimes, Kyle, a book is just a book. But thanks to the clunker card, you have the gift of wrinkle time to seek clues outside the ten Dewey Decimal Rooms. Speaking of time, a magazine available in our periodical section. It's dinner time. So the game is basically suspended until 10 o'clock tomorrow, said Kyle. Well, Kyle, that's up to you. You can use this time as a bonus to think, read, and explore, or you can run upstairs and play video games all night long. The choice is yours. We want to win this game, said Kyle. His teammates nodded in agreement. Wondermus, said Mr. Limoncello. Keep working the puzzle, but try to avoid Mrs. Basil Lee Frank Weiler's files. They're all mixed up. And before you turn in this evening, you might want to spend some time curled up with a good book. Um, they just said the book rooms are locked, said Akima. The nice lady in the ceiling was only talking about the ten Dewey Decimal Rooms. There is plenty of first-class fiction in the Rotunda Reading Room. Dr. Shinchenko has even selected seven books specifically for our seven remaining contestants. After dinner, you'll find those books on her desk. When he said that, Mr. Limoncello started winking. I think you'll find the books to be very enlightening, inspirational even. And then he winked some more. And now I must return to my side of the mountain. See you in the morning, children. I have great expectations for you all. Mr. Limoncello's image disappeared from the wall. Okay, said Akima. From the way Mr. Limoncello was just winking, either somebody kicked a bucket of sand in his face, or our recommended reading list is another clue. On the other side of the rotunda, Charles huddled with Andrew in meeting room A. I don't trust Haley, he said. Why not? Charles placed his hand on Andrew's shoulder. Well, my friend, I'm not sure if I should tell you this, but Haley told me she didn't think you were handsome enough to be in Mr. Limoncello's holiday commercials with us when we went. Because of my glasses? Charles bit his lip, nodded. Of course, I totally disagree. I see, said Andrew, his ears burning bright red then she doesn't get to see what we found in that Anne of Green Gables book. Very well, Andrew, if that's how you want to play it. You bet I do. Fine, let's go see what's for dinner. I'm starving. When Charles and Andrew entered the cafe, the Keeley team was already inside, filling their trays. Hey, way to go, Charles, joked Miguel Fernandez. You guys pulled a clunker card? Indeed we did. However, not even that bit of bad luck can derail our juggernaut. Huh? said Akima. He means we're still going to win, said Andrew. Charles and Andrew crossed to the far side of the room to join Haley, who was sitting in the corner. You guys find any clues this afternoon? she asked. Sadly, no, said Charles. All we found was that door-locking penalty, said Andrew, who could lie almost as well as Charles. How about you, Haley? Charles asked. Find anything interesting? Nope, nada. Then she yawned and finished her dinner. I think I'll head upstairs and sack out. Really? It's only 8.48. I know, but I'm really tired, she yawned again. Plus... I want to be up bright and early before the Dewey Decimal Doors reopen. We have more clues to find. See you guys tomorrow, unless we have more team business to discuss. No, 
Nothing. She walked out of the cafe. There's a little more for today, but what do you think is going to happen now? Share your prediction with your fellow listener. And now, seconds more of Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library. Very interesting, said Akima, looking through the cafe's glass walls and into the rotunda reading room. What? said Miguel. I think Clarence just dropped off our books. Kyle pushed back from the table. He could see the shadowy figure of the bulky security guard slinking away from the round desk at the center of the rotunda. He left behind a stack of books. Come on, he said. Let's go see what sort of inspirational reading Dr. Zhenchenko has selected for us. We too will find out what inspirational reading has been left by Dr. Zhenchenko at Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library continues. Mm-hmm.